Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And guys, today what I would like to share with you all is the duo Spider Stage 25 team that I was working on yesterday on stream. So this team right here is obviously not my duo team. We have five champions all doing serious work. This team is my Spider Stage 25 CVC farming team. This team is great. Does it in about 25 to 30 seconds. So it's definitely a very fast team. I actually have the video of this team on my channel as well. But to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna be using this team too much more because looking at the math behind this, I'm gonna show you guys a breakdown, but let me first actually load up my new and improved, well, not necessarily improved, but new and more efficient Spider Stage 25 team. Akoth the Seared, a free epic from Doom Tower, and it's Shock the Windarn. Now this champion actually has a lot of different options you can use. Really, both of these champions have many different options, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but first, let's load these three pieces of food in here, start the battle, and let's break down some math. So. If you had a 30 second team and you're running that during CVC because Spire Stage 25 is the best way to earn CVC points, assuming, well, as far as like regularly, okay, grinding CVC points out, it's an incredible way. I mean, 300 points per run, you're doing it very fast typically. It's a pretty easy dungeon once you have a team built for it. It's a great way to earn points. Say you had a 30 second team, okay? Say you farm for 10 hours, that's gonna be 1200 runs at 24,000 energy. Now, if you're somebody who's looking at this like, yeah, 24,000 energy, that's no problem whatsoever. Heck, I'd do that double and do 40 hours of farming during CVC alone. Well, this video may not be for you because you're next level insane as far as spider farming goes. But for me, 24,000 energy is quite a bit more than I'm doing even over the entire, entire course of CVC, okay? 24,000 energy is a lot. That's just 10 hours of farming. If you're doing 20 hours of RSL helper farming, that's gonna be 48,000 energy. That's a lot of energy. So 30 second team, little unrealistic to keep farming all the time, but we go down here to the next one, a two minute team, okay? Two minute team, it's gonna be obviously slower than 30 seconds, not too difficult to know that, but 300 runs is gonna be 6,000 energy, okay? 6,000 energy over the course of 10 hours, not terrible, definitely more than some people are gonna use, not, not as much as others, okay? So 6,000 energy over the course of 10 hours. If you did 20, 20 hours total over CVC, that's gonna be 12,000 energy. Depends on what, what you think about farming, but two minute run is about the average time of these two champions alone. Now there are some champions to speed it up, and I'll talk about that a little bit later as well, but this is the run rate of this team, okay? So we're looking at a minute and 40 right now, and a minute and 41 seconds, the run is over. No problem whatsoever. Now, the nice thing about this team, you'll notice, is there's no presets, okay? So no team setup, and the reason why that's so nice, if you're somebody who's using RSL Helper, then you don't want team presets to be there, because if you have team presets and you're leveling food champions, RSL Helper is not gonna be able to go in here, take out the food champions, make sure everything stays correct, and then rerun the team, okay? So you wanna make sure that RSL Helper can swap out just the food champions, and it does exactly that. So you'll see that Akoth and Achak both are in green, which means both these champions are locked in, okay? There's nothing special you have to do. Once these champions, I assume, are max level, RSL Helper assumes that, hey, since you're running two max level champions in there, they're probably both farming champions, they're not food champions, so don't swap them out. You'll see the others are in red, so all these champions got swapped out over the course of this run. Over the course of 100 runs, we had these champions swapped out. So 99 out of 100, 99% success rate, incredible in my opinion, a minute 56, definitely very, very fair, and it's also got the benefit of giving you CVC points for farming spider, so 300 points per spider run, plus the obvious benefit of champion leveling. So you're gonna level your champions for more CVC points, more tournament or more event points as well. Guys, this is just so many points going on in one place, plus so much silver. It's just such a great deal overall that I definitely think a lot of you should consider this, especially if you're one of those people who are like, yeah, this Spider Stage 25, 30 second team is just gonna be using way too much energy. It's just not worth it. Let's go ahead and look at the gearing of these champions, okay? So first things first, any champion that's used in these videos, if it has a buff or debuff chance, you're probably gonna need it booked. If it has a cooldown reduction, you're probably gonna need it booked. So a chalk, you're gonna want the A3 ability fully booked. The A2 ability is very nice to have fully booked as well. One whole epic book, that's pretty, pretty crazy, right? Now this is a lot of books. You don't really need the A1 fully booked, I don't think, but if you land the books there, it is what it is. It's a lot of books if you land everything here at first, but you definitely want the A3 fully booked and you definitely want the A2 fully booked as well. Now with Akoth, I don't think you need the A3 ability fully booked. I do have it booked. So both of my champions are fully booked. 
The A2, you don't need a book. I mean, there's damage percentage change, there's no buff and debuff change, and there's no cooldown reduction. So you don't really need this one booked. Now, other champions you can use before we get into the actual gearing, Crypt King Grawl in place of Akoth. So all these champions are going to be in place of Akoth. You could use Crypt King Grawl. You could probably use Tamesia. You could use probably Ignatius. You can use Tyrant Ixelmore, no problem. Any burn champion who has some level of self-sustain is going to be very, very solid instead of Akoth. You really need the burn though, of course. Now in place of a shock. A shock brings the nice benefit of having the heals all allies by 5% of their max HP every time an enemy under HP burn gets a turn. So this is very, very nice. This is something that you will have to keep in mind if you swap out a different champion here. You're going to have to probably bring some more survivability, some more healing, something for your HP burn champion. But champions who can stun, champions who can freeze, champions who maybe can provoke, though provoke still does the animations of the spiralings attacking, so it may not be the best option here. But really, this spot is just to make sure you can lock down those spiralings. So a shock does an amazing job locking down the spiralings and giving some extra support to whatever the main champion is. Honestly, I think Achak is probably one of, if not the best champions to have in this role, though a champion like Tamesia alongside a burner may be okay, but I don't have Tamesia, so I can't actually test that. Now let's take a look at the builds, okay? So the first build is Achak. Honestly, I think Achak's build is gonna be pretty open-ended. For me, I have them in Guardian set, so we're taking a little bit of pressure off of our, my main champion. So Wearer absorbs 10% of all damage dealt to ally champions. Not significant, but it's also not irrelevant either. So it's a little bit of extra damage, meaning I don't have to gear Akoth as tanky as I would have maybe if Achak didn't have the Guardian set. Plus, it heals by 10% every turn, so it's definitely very, very nice. Now, the one thing with Akoth, or Achak, sorry, the names are so similar, may get them messed up, but the one thing about Achak is that Force affinity, meaning the spiralings aren't going, aren't very likely to attack, but you do need to make sure that the HP and the defense levels are reasonable. Because if a shock gets too low, the spiralings could switch over, could start attacking a shock over a cot. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. You don't really need resistance because if a shock is not being attacked, nothing to resist, not a big deal whatsoever. You do want to have some good accuracy. You want about 200 after all the masteries are in place. So we have Swarm Smiter giving me an extra 16 per cha enemy champion alive, I believe. So not 16 per champion, but 16 total. I swear I can't actually stay clicked on this page. Here we go. All right, sorry about that. Uh, Swarm Smiter, very solid to have, especially if you're not quite at that 200 mark. But I'm not getting resisted, so this is perfectly fine right now. The speed, 200, you want you probably want 230 plus to be honest. Closer to 250 is gonna be better, but honestly, you just want to make sure you're going frequently enough to make sure the spiralings aren't attacking. I have a shock at 232, and then I have Akoth at like 250, 250, more or less, 248. So make sure the champions are relatively fast. Getting a presser on them makes it a lot easier. Getting any extra turn meter boosting abilities makes it a lot easier. Getting shadow heal helps whenever that big spider heals. You heal some as well, so making sure your champion stayed healed is obviously much, much better, and making sure they take enough turns to make sure the enemy spiralings are crowd controlled is so incredibly helpful, okay? So Oppressor is definitely the master you want to go. Now, one thing people mention about Achak is that even when fully booked, this ability has a 90% chance to actually place the freeze. Not great, but it's a 10% chance to miss, not anything drastic. You can go Fearsome Presence if you just really need that extra 5%. Sniper, not going to do anything as far as placing that freeze. So if you really need to go fearsome presence, it's probably not gonna make a significant difference. Honestly, I would rather just go some extra speed, extra turn meter from oppressor. I think that gives you more turns, meaning more chances to apply the freeze. And I believe an overall higher chance to keep everything actually frozen throughout the match. Now with Akoth, Akoth, you're gonna be able to use any of those other champions. Obviously champions like Crypt King Grawl, champions like Tyrant Ixelmore are gonna have a higher, well, a lower gear threshold, because they're tankier champions, they have more abilities in their skill set. But Akoth is a very, very solid champion. Immortal gear, regeneration gear, maybe even guardian gear. Heck, you may even be able to do this with just any gear set you want, but you would have to go over the stat minimum. So the main stats are the HP, obviously 63,000 plus is what I have, um, 4,400 defense, 248 speed, 320 resist, 201 accuracy. So resist, you want to make sure you're doing good on the resistance. Now, if you can keep all the spiralings controlled perfectly, you don't need any resistance. If you're not getting attacked, they can't place debuffs. But if you don't are not able to control the spiralings 100% of the time, 
absolutely perfect. You do need some resist because without the resist, you're going to get those fails every so often. Like you see in this screenshot, it failed one time. That was probably because some poisons got through and messed up my run. So definitely make sure you have the resist. Make sure you have accuracy. You don't want your burns being resisted from the spiderlings. Defense and HP. If you drop some of the defense, boost up your HP. If you drop some HP, boost up your defense. The benefit of this team is that you have Akoth with a good HP aura and you have a Chalk with a good defense aura. So if you want more defense, just throw a Chalk in the lead. If you want more HP, just throw Akoth, Tyrant, Crypt King Grawl, any of those champions, just throw them in the lead instead. Akoth also has a shield on his A3 ability, very, very solid overall. The reason why I have the Immortal set is because it gives me a little bit extra base HP plus 15% per complete set. It's only going to heal, I guess, 9% overall, about. So it's not as good of healing as Regeneration plus Immortal, but I didn't want to go all out on this piece of gear. Honestly, we may be able to break one or two of these sets and be perfectly fine. Just make sure your HP and your defense numbers are good. I think this amount of defense is a little bit overkill, but it's working out very consistently. I mean, you see 99 out of 100%. 99 out of 100 success rate. So I'm definitely very happy with it. Now, as far as the masteries go, with any of these masteries, if you have the ability to get plenty of resistance, don't worry about going defiant. Just go tough skin, get whatever you need. This is very nice because it helps boost the healing from regeneration, from immortal, everything like that. Shadow heal, like I mentioned on a chalk, very, very nice. Over here in support, if you need more accuracy, go pinpoint accuracy. If you have plenty of accuracy, go steadfast. Not a problem whatsoever. You get some turn meter boosting abilities. He does place a buff on the shield. So if it expires, extra turn meter. Whenever his debuffs expire, extra turn meter. Cycle of Magic, very nice to keep him going around to that A2 and that A3 ability. Um, Lore of Steel, obviously going to give me some extra HP from those Immortal sets. And then Oppressor, very, very important. Steadfast, when your allies die, you get some more speed. You can see a common theme here, okay? We want to keep them alive, and we want to make sure they're taking pretty frequent turns. And so far, this has worked great. Now, let's give an example with... Wait, dang, we're getting so many offers popping up. This is like the third or fourth op offer. 7,500 gems. That's not actually too bad, is it? All right, Plarium, stop, stop tempting me. You got to chill out, okay? Um, at least not on the video. I got to tell everybody I'm free to play. We're not doing dragon. What's going on here? So let's go down to Spider Stage 25, like I'm trying to show you guys. We'll throw in Crypt King Grawl this time, and we'll see the difference, okay? So the Akoth team, Akoth and Achak, was about, was it a minute and 40? This team should be faster. Now, it does vary, okay? You can see in the screenshot, the average time was a minute 46. I did a run earlier that took me two minutes and 33 seconds with the Akoth team, and the run just now showed you guys was a minute 41. So there is a pretty big difference in the team length. Maybe if you went Evil Eye, maybe it can make you have shorter runs, but it's not something that I've jumped into trying yet. Uh, but either way, Crypt King Grawl, I think, does speed the runs up just a little bit because he has the benefit of bringing in a freeze as well as a Chalk's freeze. So Crypt King Grawl plus a Chalk, going to keep most of the enemies frozen, which is very nice because if they're not doing their animations, it's a much quicker runtime overall, which obviously you don't want this run to take forever. While I mentioned the difference in the energy cost, you obviously, most people aren't going to be spending this much energy. You also don't want to be doing four minute runs where you're spending what, 2000 energy basically, or something pretty low like that. So keep in mind, you do want it to be a reasonable fast team. The speeds on these champions have worked great. They're very consistent. This is definitely not a fully optimized version of it. I do believe you can make this faster. I do believe you can make it more consistent, even hundred percent consistent. You have two champions. It's a lot less RNG involved in this, in my opinion, because you have two champions, want kind of able to soak each other's stuff honestly if crypt king grawl if the burn champion survives then you're probably going to be 100 consistent to be honest because a chalk if if the burn champion dies a chalk's not going to be able to do anything but if a chalk dies the burn champion crypt king grawl especially can kind of hold his own on spider stage 25 at least for a little while but all that's theory crafting i actually haven't tested that that's just a theory so if anybody here has a champion who can solo spider stage 25 definitely let me know i'd be very curious in knowing but as far as this team right here goes, it looks like uh, it's actually slower than the Akoth team, or at least the example I gave in this video. But every other time, Crypt King Grawl has been faster than Akoth. It seems like more consistently, but I actually haven't ran them 100 times to really confirm that. So maybe I'll do that later on. Maybe I'll give him the 100 run test and see how he does. It looks like it's going to be about 2 minutes and 6 seconds right on the dot. So not too bad of a team. But guys, I'm going to be honest, 5,999 experience, which is the most experience of any dungeon, it's pretty solid, and I can go from a 30-second team, which I can't run all of CVC anyways, 
or a two minute and 16, which I could run overnight. I could run it for about 10 hours, spend 6,000 energy, which is probably more energy than I'm gonna spend anyways. I could get the benefits of champion training events, champion training tournaments, champion training for CVC points, plus my spider runs. This seems like a no brainer option to be honest. I mean, it's not as good as soloing because you have one other champion who could be a food champion leveling, but doing Spire Sage 25 solo is very difficult. So this seems like a perfect option for me, to be honest. Stage 24, Crypt King can technically solo. My Crypt King can do it. Not 100% success rate yet, but you guys let me know what you think. I'm definitely enjoying this team, definitely liking it. Like I said, there are so many different options you can use. A burn champion and then a control champion in the second spot. It's a pretty simple team. Test out some different champions. These are the two that worked. I wanted to provide you guys with a team that's very accessible in my opinion. A chalk being the only epic you actually have to get from shards. Akoth being what? The first, the second Doom Tower champion. So if you're doing Doom Tower secret rooms whatsoever on normal, you're gonna have Akoth. Not too difficult. I have Akoth, okay? And I don't even do Doom Tower secret rooms like I should, even on normal. But with that said, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Hopefully you can make your brand new Spider Sage 25 team. But if you do and you face my clan in the next CVC, don't use it, okay? I'm not trying to lose CVC. We want to win the CVC. But either way, guys, hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a sub on the channel. Drop a like on this video. It's all very much appreciated. And I will catch you all in the next one.